Hey folks, this is Walt, and you're watching part two of Ask the Editor with Alan Campbell on Keystroke Medium. Speaking of, of like reading, um, another question from Bill. Um, are there any self-editing techniques or steps an author can take before inflicting their work on an editor? Um, I've often heard it's much like lawyers. Anybody who edits himself has a fool for a client. Well, you should always start by getting your ducks in a row. So, I mean, I don't know. I, there are exceptional people, probably, that maybe can. But you you get what's called error fatigue. And you don't see it. And especially when you're really familiar with the work, you see what you think is there, not, not what's actually there. Yes, things that you can do before you send it to an editor, things that you should do even if you can't send it to an editor. After you're done writing, put it away, put it away for as long as you can stand it, a week, two weeks, a month if you can, and then come back to it. Your eyes will be a little fresher, your brain will be a little rested, you'll be able to look at it objectively. Um, other things that you can do is actually use the tools that are at your disposal, like a spell check. Um, if you can get somebody to read it, read it aloud to you, that's great because then you hear where the, the missing words are or the misplaced words are. Uh, yeah, do, do any and all of those things. Now, speaking of reading aloud, um, mm -hmm. as Americans, we love to shorten everything. Everything has to be quick and now and and let's do this, right? But even even in, in a, an expression like let's do this, it's not let us do this. You know, okay. we, can, we, we contract everything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is is that always a good choice, uh, especially when you're reading aloud and, and you want to make it as close to um, how things are spoken in your native like area? Um, is that always a good thing? At, if In general, you should use contractions if contractions are being used because we, we're not talking about literary publications. We're not talking about textbooks or academics. We're talking about people reading. And if it's going to sound stilted in the little voice in the other guy in, the, in your reader's head, because he's hearing the words as you read them, if it's going to sound stilted and and stuffy and old and like your English teacher that you had in in first grade or you know or at, in college, then by all means contract. I am a big proponent of use contractions. Is there any, ever a time where you really don't use them? And I know you had mentioned uh, the other day, uh, it was on another Keystroke show, that uh, uh, one of the things that you're commonly seeing in uh, fiction today is uh, people leaving out the subject. Uh, so, like, instead of, instead of uh, he went to the store, it's like, okay, so went to the store and so forth and so on. Uh, I, in that instance, I was talking specifically about dialogue. People are, are dropping pronouns and articles. And, they're, and it's, a, it's a valid style choice, but if every single one of your characters talks in clipped sentences, or, you know, dropping the articles, if everybody talks that way, it's not a character trait, it's a habit, and everybody sounds the same. So, Is that most common with uh, somebody who, say, uh, speaks a foreign language? Uh, some, of their, some of their text in the dialogue might seem halting? Um, no, it's more common with the just your garden variety Americans. I actually have several clients that English is a second language for them and they do on the whole a lot better. <laughs> is that because they're, they're more attentive to try and, and, and uh, kind of like seize that, that native speaker's voice versus somebody who's already a native speaker and, and might be so comfortable that they start leaving things out? Uh, yeah, I think you put your finger on it. Yes, Americans get careless and the quality of education over here is such that sometimes we don't get the learning that we should have and they just don't know the difference. Right on. So what's the funniest thing you've ever edited? Oh gosh. Like you look back at it and you say to yourself, okay, there was that time that uh, coffee came out my nose. Uh, you know, I almost stepped on the dog. Yeah, you know, I, that I, that's actually happened to me. Both of those things have happened to me. Um, <laughs> With your dog, I don't, I don't doubt it. I think the the all around funniest book I ever edited was, uh, gosh, that's hard. Uh, there's a an author named Martina Fetzer, and she wrote a series, Time Binge, Time Purge, 
and Jeannie ruins everything. It's, it's the third in that trilogy. And she is just hysterically funny, smart and funny. And uh, yeah, if, if it's like if you like uh, Arrested Development funny. It's that kind of funny. That's fantastic. So almost yeah. like you can hear Danny DeVito reading it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we have another. It's, it's Ron Howard. Oh, gotcha. Reading it. <laughs> my bad. Showing my my lack of uh, cultural appropriation in 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 popular media. I only just started watching it, so. <laughs> um, Don Chapman asks, uh, "Why are there such vast differences in editing? If you send a manuscript to six different people, you get six different versions back. How are we supposed to know?" Who to trust? I always just want to when when I got a question like that uh, because I'm a, such a fan of the show. I always want to do Josh's of Doom. Of Doom, dun dun da. Okay. <laughs> well, that's kind of a multi pronged question, Don. There to start with, English is very subjective, so a lot of times it's not going to be one exactly right answer, but any number of entirely wrong answers. So it's like there's a lot of ways to get to the Coliseum, but uh, different people like different routes, you know. And then you. <laughs> Dexter strikes. <laughs> that is not the ultrasonic squeaky toy. <laughs> I so am going to get one of those. <laughs> uh, there are different kinds of editing. So if you send your manuscript to a developmental editor for an edit, expecting it to come back clean with no typos and the grammar is right, then that's, that's, you're going to be sorely disappointed because that's not what they're doing. There are four or five, depending on who you ask, different kinds of basic manuscript editing. You know, there's developmental editing, line editing, copy editing, um, proofreading, and each of them does a different thing. And so, you see, if you don't know what kind of edit you need and you send it to an editor that's doing a different kind of edit or not doing the edit, you, the job that you expect, then you're going to be disappointed. So it behooves you to learn what different kinds of edits are. And if nothing else, just make sure that you talk with your editor and find out and, and manage the expectations so that you know what they're doing and they know what you're expecting. What's the what's the most difficult type of client that an editor works with when when you're when you're suggesting changes? Uh, do you have do you, uh, I know some people like uh, like uh, my friends who are police? They always say that they have uh, um, a list of people they deal with. You got the you got the combat guy who wants to fight everything you're trying to do. You have the um, you know you have the the uh, cop groupie who just wants to be involved the stuff like that. <laughs> What's that? The buckle bunny. The buckle bunny. Yep. So, I mean, um, do you, do editors, you know, do you guys have a secret conclave where you get together and it was like, hey, yes, and the and guy came to me and said. Yes, we actually do. What's a, what's your what's your favorite kind of uh, uh, guy that, that looks, or, you know, person that looks for editing? I I pretty much like everybody. Um, My favorite... The first time it happened to me, it just freaked me out when somebody just blindly accepted all my edits. So, but I don't, you know, everybody's different and everybody's the same. I can tell you that men are less likely to question edits than women. But the men that do question edits question every single one of them. <laughs> So you have the manna from heaven guy, you have the questioning guy or girl. Mm -hmm. um, what's the uh, what's the most difficult person to deal with? I've not ever had anybody be really difficult to deal with as a client. Um, I've had people that were difficult to deal with when the client was an anthology publisher, when I didn't, when I should have had leverage and didn't, but. Uh, because what it boils down to is if, Walt, if you hire me, you're my client and 
we're equals, but it's your decision. It comes down to what you want because you're paying for it. So is that like, um, does that almost make an editor like a sculptor? You know, you the uh, the writer has given you that stone and you're just chipping away the rough edges? Exactly, exactly. And then let's tie that back to the, are there self-editing things I should do? Absolutely, because if you give me a stone that's got the general shape of, of what you want, I might be able to carve a woman out of the, the tomb-shaped silhouette. But if you give me a woman, I can do her makeup and I can do her hair and I can get her ready for the Oscars. Right on. And, and tying back into that, do you, do you have like, um, uh, do you have like a, like a trophy room of some of the most epic edits, almost like, uh, having the heads of your, of your trophy kills on the walls, like little, I could picture like away from the screen, little like black window boxes, that has like, you know, the epic run on sentence that you had to tackle or so forth and so on. Well, it's not quite as epic as you described it. It's a little file on my desk called Howlers. <laughs> oh, tell us more, tell us more. It's, no, and if I come across an epic, epic, just I can't even believe anybody would write this and walk away, then I just copy it into this file and save it and trot it out at parties. <laughs> uh, what was the what was what was the biggest thing like like the biggest uh, uh editorial mountain that you had to climb was it something like somebody gave you a uh a 17 18 19 word sentence and you whittled it down to shut up oh gosh um yeah i yes i've done that any number of times um unfortunately i only started the howler file about a year ago. So I've lost like four years worth of, I can't even believe this is happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, just between you and several thousand of our closest friends on YouTube, uh, how many people are in that file? How many people that we both know? Oh, uh, you know, either we both know or, or just in the file. Oh, just in the file, probably. 15 or 20. How many people from Keystroke Medium are in the file? Um, <laughs> I'll never tell. Uh, I got you. That goes a right along Josh with the question. Josh is definitely of, in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, who's your favorite, Josh or Scott? Uh, and who's oh, your favorite, favorite to torture? It's favorite for what? Uh, I mean, favorite to torture? Um, I've been known to punch Joshua. <laughs> physically punch Joshua in public. Um, I haven't punched Scott. He looks tall. Josh is a lot taller than Scott. Really? Yeah. I would have f pictured that the other way around. Yeah, exactly. It might be just camera angles that are getting crazy. Like, no, Josh is like six foot five. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's almost a foot taller than I am. That's amazing. He's more than a foot taller than I am. That picture of, <laughs> of, of me coming up to his armpit is really me just coming like right up to here on him. Right on. Yeah. Now, uh, much like uh, Josh and Scott have alter egos that, uh, you know, they, uh, as mild-mannered, uh, you know, uh, police detectives, you know, back in the day, uh, do you have an alter ego that uh, you hide from the world? Like I said, just between us. No. No, not even a little. <laughs> what you see is what you get? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, s speaking of that... Um, is it true that you shot a man in Reno just to watch him die? No, I shot him because he called me sugar tits. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought the taser would have been more appropriate for that one. We're not talking about the taser. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, where, um, where is the, where is the line as an editor um, between um shooting a client and, and, and praising a client. And does, does an editor ever praise a client? Sure. Yeah. I try, I try to make a point of it because I know that it can just be overwhelming to open your document, see 5,000 changes or more, depending on the length of the document and see all of your pretty words going away and little comments that could be construed as smart ass. If you are going in thinking that I'm a known smart ass, I'm not a known smart ass, read them with an open mind. Um, yeah, I, I like to point out like, Hey, wow, this sentence, this is like perfection or great job. Yeah, I do all the time. 
And going to the other side of that, um, uh, in our, in my other podcast that, uh, uh, I get, to, I get the privilege of doing, uh, we address, uh, first time people who are getting into, uh, certain aspects of publishing. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, what are some of the, like the nerves that, that people have to tackle, um, in order to, to get to an editor for the first time? Uh, because it can be it, it, for a first time writer, uh, dropping your manuscript on an editor is probably a pretty nerve wracking task, especially if you porn. I know, um, Josh, uh, to, uh, to pimp his latest book, uh, Josh just released a, a book that, um, he has been repeatedly, uh, heard saying that has, it took him six years to write. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, what are what are some of the mountains that people have to tackle before they get to an editor and and, and say, hey, uh, this is my baby. Can you help me? Well, firstly, they have to write it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I there are two kinds of, of writers. There are the writers that are afraid that everything's wrong, and the writers that know that nothing is wrong, and. Uh, the former is a lot easier to deal with because yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the kind of changes that you, that you would go through mentally giving, giving your work to somebody else to, to criticize. But you know, for some people it's easy for other people. It's not so much Dexter stop. Oh my God. He's so cute. I know. Do you want him? Uh, you bring him, <laughs> bring him. He can, like I said, I have a, I have a Belgian Malinois. They would get together yeah. famously. But I, I try to be cognizant that no matter how rough I think it is or whether I think it's good, bad, or whatever, this person did work on it, even if it was only for two weeks because they're trying to drop a book every 30 days. This person oh. did work on it. It matters. But, but for a first-time author, yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary. And I, and I know that it is. And I, I, I have a reputation for being a hard ass, and maybe I am. But I do know that you have feelings, and I won't walk all over them unless you give me grievous, grievous cause to do it. <laughs> Such as? Um, using the word. Grievous? No. Let's, let's, let's say using the word just 762 times. <laughs> I, am a, I am a terrible crutch word user, and, and I, I try to pour through anything I write. Um, uh, to try and rip them out because um, much like English, like uh, like right now, um, as a non-native speaker, my mind is is just punching forward. Um, and as just uh, any any word to help me bridge a thought mm -hmm. um, as I try and even though even though I've been speaking English most of my life, there's still that little hiccup of of your brain trying to formulate that thought. Um, so yeah, I can, I can definitely identify with that. Well, your brain is moving pretty fast because you're, a, you're a lot quicker on the ball and a lot more clear with your speech than somebody that uses like as a verbal tick, like, like, <laughs> like, like, so, I mean, you're doing all right. I, I'm, I'm faking a good game. Uh, yeah, it, I it, so. it, it helped me, me get my wife. <laughs> it, you told me until I edited you. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, and, it, uh, you know, to be, uh, that on was the other mean, side. I'm sorry. No, please. I, I I take all criticism. Uh, anything I can learn from is 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 fantastic. Um, but yeah, that uh, that that story originally was written uh, um, that that you edited as part of uh, uh, Beyond Horizons. Mm -hmm. um, that story was actually written right when I got home from Iraq. So that was oh, wow. uh, that was almost twelve years ago. So and then you know I I just finished it and and uh, luckily. Uh, you know, the keystroke crew was very kind and, and yeah. let me uh, play in some, some very esteemed company. So that was, that was fantastic. Yeah. Well, Josh told me uh, that you had beta strikers war for him and that, you, cr and that you, that you had strong emotional reaction to one, one scene in, in particular. And I'd like to tell you you're welcome because I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I rewrote that actually from what Josh had through. Well, I'm taking too much credit and we should probably wrap this up because I am starting to say unwise things. <laughs> Strikers War was a lot of fun. That was a great, great story. I really enjoyed reading that. I, I really enjoyed it the second time. 
I mean, after I got <laughs> through it the first time. After after the edits, and, and just one more question, real quick. You said mm -hmm. you know, um, um, going going back when you just said uh, you know I really enjoyed it the second time. Um, you said you get that story out of your head. It's on the paper. It, you, you think you've got it all down and everything. The self editing is, is you feel is crisp, but then again, it's your story. So you know, all the beats, yeah. you put it in the drawer to put it away, to get that fresh eyes on it later. Do yeah. editors do that as well? Um, yes, yes. Or, or that's the plan. I typically take a book through two rounds of edits and I don't like to do them back to back. I'll do your book and then I'll, do the first round on somebody else's book and then when you're done with your edits i'll come back to it then i don't like to do it slam bam 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 because yeah um error fatigue right on so it's kind of like it's kind of like uh um when you're sampling different cheeses from a cheese plate there's fruit in the middle to cleanse your palate before you go back to a certain type mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly uh, yeah, exactly sure. I, no, he's, he's killing me. He's <laughs> killing me. You're killing me, son. You're killing me. Oh, my goodness. Well, there, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to sit in and, and help you with the show. I, I greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you for doing it because I was lost and I appreciate your help. Oh, absolutely. So since this is my show, I guess I should be the one to wrap it up. And again, Walt, thank you so much. And I hope you'll do it with us again. Absolutely. Call on me anytime. Great. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.